Hey guys, today we're taking a look at Spectrum Noir Illustrator Markers and we're going to make this lovely piece as a field test. So keep on watching. Hey guys, today we're taking a look at the Spectrum Noir Illustrator Markers and um, I received two additional ones in a scrawler box. So we have Old Lavender and Wisteria. We also have the Portrait Set, and I picked this up from Michaels like in January. Um, and the box says these are twin tip artist markers. And the colors in the Portrait Set are dusty pink, cream, peach, ivory, natural brown, and dark brown. And the back says, Illustrator by Spectrum Noir for smooth, natural line work and detailed coloring, fully blendable, streak-free coverage, perfect for drawing and illustration. And those of you who watch this channel, you know that I have used Copic and other types of alcohol markers and I have reviewed a bunch of them over the years. So if anyone is gonna call their bluff, it would be me. So we're gonna start with the two cent in scrawler box and we're actually gonna use the scrawler box paper to swatch and we're gonna swatch the brush tip and the smaller detailing tip. And we'll just take a look there. That's the detailing tip. Caps do not post. They are hexagonal, so they're not as likely to roll off your desk. And there we have the brush tip. It is a fiber brush tip. And actually, you know what? Before we start a swatching, why don't we do a little comparison? Earlier in the year, I believe I did a overview slash comparison video of the Crafters Companion alcohol markers. And I think I even included the Spectrum Aqua in it. And Crafters Companion has really released a lot of markers, but they haven't really brought anything new or innovative to the table, which is sort of unfortunate. So I have here all the ones minus the G1 um, Crafters Companion Spectrum Noir Marker. I have them all laid out here. Go ahead, take a look. So I'm gonna actually put all of the markers made by Spectrum Noir up together. So we have the Illustrator, which we're talking about today. We have the Spectrum Noir Colorista. And this was included, I believe, in a scrawler box that was sent to my friend Kabocha. And I begged her to send them to me so I could get a look at them. Then we have the G2 Spectrum Noir. And I do believe this one does not have the brush tip replacement. See if I can dig out one of them that does have the brush tip replacement so you guys can see. And I also have videos on that process. Excuse the background noise. I'm going through my markers to see if I can find them. Yeah, here we go. Oh, and I found a G1, perfecto. Now, which one of these? Haha, <laughs> this has a brush. And I even did a tutorial on labeling your alcohol markers like this if you make any modifications using a acrylic. Oh, whoa, look at this. So I just uncapped it and it just ripped the whole like nib brush body because it became kind of like attached. That's always a good thing to happen, but better that it happened on camera. You guys can see it happen. All right, so one end and the other. Line that up there. So that's the replacement brush tip. Then there's the G1, which does not have a replaceable brush, but is refillable. Now, these are all alcohol markers. And then finally, the Spectrum Aqua, which is a water-based marker, and it's a watercolor marker made by Spectrum, o Spectrum Noir slash Crafters Companion. And they also make color pencils, and I have a set of those as well. And as we go, I'm taking photos, and you guys can possibly check them out on the blog, but also possibly this might be the only place you can see them because I get really tired of doing the whole marker post. So I'm gonna recap all of the, or most of 
the Spectrum Noir markers. I am, however, going to leave out the most relevant. So the Illustrator, the Colorista, a Spectrum Noir G2, which doesn't have the new brush tip, and then with the replacement brush. However, I'm gonna cap them so I don't waste, don't allow it to evaporate. And I use alcohol markers for illustration. All right, so we have, I'm gonna put them in order of relevance. There we go. All nice and neatly lined up. We have the Illustrator, which is a brush tip non-refillable, to my knowledge, marker. Um, we have the Spectrum Noir with a replacement brush, the Spectrum Noir that didn't have a replacement brush, so it's got the original nibs, and then the Spectrum Noir Colorista. So let's take a look at the two brush markers in two end. So both are hexagonal. The Illustrator marker has um, larger flat sides, so they're a little more ergonomic than the... Wow, did you guys see that? I uncapped it. And the little ink pod, which I'm gonna take a picture of this because I'm sure somebody is interested in what this looks like. Um, it just like flew out. Wow, I don't think that's supposed to happen. I don't think that happens with other alcohol marker brands, but I could be wrong. Anyway, that's not, that is not good. And it probably means this marker needs some serious maintenance. There we go, get that tip off. All right, so with the replacement marker, Spectrum Noir cells separate, um, they're like foam rubber nibs, so they're similar to what Copic, and I'm so sorry, you guys. They're similar to what Copic has, so you end up with the bullet nib, and the brush nib if you modify your G2. And then with the Illustrator nibs, you have a fiber nib and then a smaller bullet nib. And put them end to end. So the replacement nib on the G2 is slightly larger than the actual nib, the, the one and only nib on the Illustrator marker. And the bullet nib is also larger than the bullet nib on the illustrator marker. Now we're going to grab, let me get them on camera. So next is an unmodified Spectrum Noir G2 alcohol marker. So I replaced the chisel nib with a brush. And then we have the Colorista. These are for coloring books, but they're still alcohol ink. So what makes them for coloring books is they have smaller nibs. Now, what makes them not for coloring books is they're alcohol ink and that tends to bleed through. So you have a smaller nib, similar in size to the Illustrator, and then you have a larger bullet nib, similar in size to the G2. And then we've got some other alcohol markers to take a look at. We have here a ubiquitous Copic sketch. I think most people have seen those around. And I'll actually grab a Copic original, but I have replaced the... Mm -hmm. Well, I thought I had one really handy, but it seems that I do not. I do not have a Copic original handy. I have it in the color duck egg and I don't know where it ran away to. So no, we won't be looking at a Copic original then. We have a Neo Pico 2 sent to me thanks to my friend Kabocha. Thank you very much. And so far, all the markers on the table right here in the shot are refillable. Now we have two non-refillables. We have the Blick Studio brush marker, which I heartily recommend as an alcohol marker despite the fact that it's not refillable. And then we also have a Prismacolor Premier brush marker. So here's the lineup. Now I'm gonna go ahead and recap all of these. This isn't necessarily a comparison video. I wanna give the Illustrator marker a chance to shine or fail on its own merits. 
Oh wait, I actually believe that one is not refillable. The verdict is still sort of out. I still need to do some digging. And then, you know, with a lot of these non-refillable markers, you can jerry-rig a refill for them. So, okay, so we're going to zoom it zoom in and we're swatching Old Lavender DP2. And then we're gonna test out the bullet nib. and cap it because it has been left out to dry. Now we have Wisteria DP1. So we were sent two DP, does that mean deep purple? I'm actually quite excited about these colors because I thought I bought the warm gray set, but I'd actually bought the portrait set. So I have enough to actually do a person. Okay, next we have Dusty Pink FS2. Is that flesh or skin tone? FS2. And this is part of that six piece portrait set. And these brush nibs don't really have a lot of give. And I know some companies love including them because they're like, oh, it behaves more like an actual brush. No, it behaves like garbage. An actual brush, you would use individual bristles and that wouldn't really work very well with alcohol markers because those tend to be made out of nylon. Or I guess you could like really splurge and do it with um, like actual animal hairs, but that would probably dry them out. Okay, so we have Cream FS6. Next, Peach FS5. But hey, I am not the only artist. So if you actually like these fiber tip brush nibs on your alcohol markers, as opposed to the foam rubber nibs, Ivory FS9, let me know in the comments below and share a link to your work. I am always interested in how other artists accomplish things. Okay, now I'm gonna cheat cheat and I'm gonna go above these because I ran out of room. And now we have natural brown, EB, earth brown. I don't, I'm just guessing with the, have to look that up, of course. But these fiber nibs feel mushy. And I'm not really one for bullet nibs. I'll just use a chisel nib or try to be very delicate with my brush nib. Although with these brush nibs, hmm. Once they get beaten up, they're harder to be delicate with. So we have dark brown EB7, and we're running out of room, unfortunately. All right, so I'm gonna label these swatches, these swatchulas, and then we're gonna start deciding whether or not we wanna do a field test with these. So looking at them after labeling them, some of these colors seem really saturated for what they're describing. Like this is very orange for a cream and this is very intense for a peach. Um, whereas the colors from the nib seem much more, the bullet nib seem a little more workable, but that could be because they're putting down less alcohol ink. All right, so to begin with, I wanna try drawing. I say try, but we all know that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna draw a cute girl. And I wanna do it with colored lead. And we're going to use Pilot Color Eno, and this is their pink. And I have other tutorials here on this channel on how you can use this lead with your alcohol markers. And I'm kinda coming to this without any without any inspiration on the table. So hopefully I can make it work. Of course, whenever I sketch like this without figuring things out first, my proportions always end up kind of weird. There is something underneath which is making the lines I draw a little wonky. Oh, 
All right, and then before I get into too, too much detail, I'm gonna use a an eraser and knock some of these lines back a little bit. Now the marker, alcohol marker, will end up kind of dissolving some of them, but it just makes for a cleaner illustration if you clean up some of these lines. before they get too bad. Alright, so we've basically got this sketched in. I'm going to remove some of the excess lines. And I wanted something with a nice, lively feeling. So, of course, since hair has lots of movement, I thought that would be a good option. And then I'm going to use drafting brush to remove the excess. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with her dress. And I think I'm going to go with PS2. Looks like it, PS2. So that is dusty pink. And I don't have a blender for these. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just use a Copic blender marker or prismacolor marker whatever i can grab in a second so i am putting down a base layer on this mystery paper this paper was from the scrawler box let's see what i need prismacolor it is and also going to start with a base layer on her nose and mouth and even though these are brand new markers because they have that like just sort of mushiness to the nib. It makes it, I feel like it's a harder marker to use. The brush is somewhat flexible, but not as flexible as I would want. And I can't necessarily work as fine as I would like either. And I'm using a trick that I usually use with darker skin tones where I go ahead and I put my, my, um, like my blush tone down first. Except I'm blending it out just a little bit here. I don't know if that's gonna work in my benefit or if it's going to make things not look very good. We'll find out. Might actually need to switch this out. It doesn't feel like it's dry, but it goes down like it's dry. And then I'll do another layer. I have to be kind of responsible and try to get the most out of these colors because I really don't, all I have are skin tones and then like, those kind of weird colored violets. So I have to try and get as much use as possible out of them. And then I really don't like FS9, but my other skin tone option is FS6 and FS5, and both of those are too dark for what I mean, I, if I'm going to go dark, I really want to go dark. And it's just like the, the color spread, if that makes sense, the difference between each, each color, um, it just doesn't really make it feasible. So I guess I'm going to start with FS9, even though it's really light. 
It's really going to pull or push those pinks I just put down, which were really pretty. Actually, it's going to really push that back. And Spectrum Noir alcohol inks also really seem to spread out a lot. So the mushy brush combined with how much the ink spreads on this mystery paper makes it a little hard to control, a little hard to get what I'm going for. It also really desaturates that pink. I guess we're gonna do ivory colored lace. So in these larger areas, I probably should slow down. I'm used to Copic where I know I'm gonna do multiple layers. So it's okay if my first layer is kind of streaky because there's gonna be lots of layers on top of that. And I need to adjust how I'm holding the marker because the hexagonal shape is starting to bite into my hand a little bit. Very used to like Copic sketches or, I mean, even the, the Blick Studio brush markers have a hexagonal shape, but it's not as sharp as this. So this makes it, that makes it kind of uncomfortable to hold. And also it makes it a little more difficult to use. And I know her head is way too big. So I'm gonna go in now for a second layer. And everywhere that's in shadow, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill it in. And these markers are kind of fatiguing to hold because it's sharp, it's not sharp sharp, but it's sharp enough that it gets, it starts biting into my hand after a little while. So they're not ergonomic and they're somewhat difficult to control. And then your two options are like this sort of flabby fiber nib. And then also like a two small bullet nib. So your options for gently rendering large areas, I'm not really great with these. And in the six color portraits set, they don't really include too many colors that work well to add shadow. You mostly get a selection of browns, uh, Caucasian sort of um, peachy tones, and then um, pinks, a pink. Um, it's a good thing that I did get some colors that I can sort of knock this down with. So I'm gonna try using Wisteria, which is a very muted purple. And you guys can probably see how much that ink is spreading. And if you can't, take my word for it, it is a lot. And I'm gonna have to do another layer on the skin because I wanna blend this out. I don't actually really like this color. I thought it would be the best in this situation. I'm gonna try to make it work. But as you guys can see, it's pretty, it's pretty dark on her skin. And just really desaturates the skin color more than I wanted it to. And also just really blends a lot, so you, or smears a lot. It really like expands a lot. So it's hard to like, be careful enough with where you're putting it because it's going to end up kind of going where it wants to anyway. Maybe it's this paper. I wish I knew what this paper was. It really wants to buckle with the alcohol marker and I've never encountered that. I wish Sketchbox or Scrawlerbox, my, my mistake, I wish Scrawlerbox would t uh, tell us what paper they're including. Okay. Then I need to do, I feel like I should do another on top of this because I don't really like how that's turning out. So I'm gonna grab Dusty Pink again. And go back in and hopefully reinforce some of the blush without like ruining everything. And I'd been warned about these markers. Um, Another artist on Instagram, idiot, I think it's like Idiotic Illustrator, warned me that these are not good, not good to use. 
So I did, I did go into this with fair warning. Ugh. Really don't like them. And I don't really like my color options either. Okay, I guess I'm gonna give it another go with F not FS9. Try to build up more tones with just one color and also try to marry this terrible color I use for the skin tone. And I could have, I see, I could have approached this in like a stylish way and only use certain colors, but I kind of wanted to play around with the markers and the blend, blendability a bit more. So that's why I'm sort of approaching it the way I would, or as similarly to my normal way as possible and not necessarily like I would if this was a challenge because with the challenge, the challenge is to make it work. With this, with the field test, the challenge is, um, are these good enough for, you know, to be your everyday use? And I'm saying, no. They hurt the hand, they bleed a lot, the brush is really mushy. And they're not as inexpensive as you would think. It's like $19 for like six, and you can get a better deal, I believe, with uh, Lick Studio brush markers than that, and you're gonna be a lot happier too. Okay, so I am super not pleased with this so far. That's okay, that's unfortunately part of it. We're gonna use Old Lavender on the pink dress. You know, just compound our mistakes. Okay, and then we're gonna switch back over to dusty pink. Knock that down a bit. At least dusty pink is a pretty color, but even it's too, I wouldn't call it a dusty pink. It's almost like a salmon pink, you know, or like a peachy pink. It's just too saturated for what they're calling it. Ooh, and there's gonna be muddy blending, muddy knockback here. This actually reminds me of the Windsor & Newton alcohol markers. They bought them from Letraset and then branded them as Windsor & Newton. And I really didn't like those either. And I had somebody on my blog tell me that I was using markers all wrong and I should just shut my face basically. <laughs> it reminds, this is reminding me of that. That situation where there's just no salvaging. All right, well. The paper is really wet, a lot of very thin paper. So there's a lot of bleed through as well. So I really don't want everything blending into everything else. So what I, I kind of want to do is give it a chance to dry a little. Um, I guess I'm gonna do another regrettable thing. Just live my life full of regrets. I want a little shadow on the upper part of her eye. And part of the problem was, is also like, it's really hard for me to be delicate with the brush because the brush is like already kind of beaten out of shape and kind of frayed. Even though it's a brand new product, I just got it. All right, so use some of my Prismacolor blender marker because I don't have a blender marker for these. Use my Prismacolor to knock that back down a little bit. Okay, and now I guess I want to use cream. See, it's easier when you just start using the markers and like the tip is still fresh. It's a lot easier to get like the line you want, but as the marker gets kind of broken in, it's frustrating. There was some other marker I was using recently that had a tip like this and they were really insistent that their weird fiber tip was like the way to go. 
companies that use these fiber tips, if there's like a rep watching this, would one of you please tell me why you use this tip? Like, I'm sure there's like research going on, especially with Spectrum, Spectrum Noir, because they have, they've already like made a foam brush tip. And that's what I originally thought these would come like standard with, was that like foam brush tip? So it's like, you had a good, you had a good brush tip, why? Or a good enough brush tip, like why are you, why are you torturing us with this? What's going on here? Swing back around with FS9 and blend some of this so we can get some of that color, you know. That ear, that ear is like a hot and terrible mess. It's a bad, bad ear. I think my fellow YouTubers will know what I'm talking about, but you know when you're like, you're working on like a field test or a demo piece or something like that, tutorial piece, for example, and you're like, boy, I hope this turns out well, because then I can sell it and make a little extra money. And then it turns out like, like this, like really just like a hot mess. And like, yeah, you can probably salvage it, but it wouldn't be a piece you'd be comfortable necessarily selling. Yeah, that's, that's this. And I've been donating a lot of money for the Hurricane Harvey relief efforts because I'm from Louisiana and I have family in that area. So like it really been really rough watching the news. And so I was hoping like this would turn out well enough that I could sell it and raise some money for that. And it's like, oh, nope, you did not. That's not gonna work. Not good enough. I also have a tendency, as you guys probably know, to try and overwork things, like to not not know when enough was enough. So maybe I need to leave that alone. Maybe I need to just like walk away. Maybe I need to just move on to the dress or really better move on to the hair, but you know. I actually prefer to wait until the skin is finished before I do hair stuff. But I'm really trying to build up the dress so that it's a little bit darker and it goes with that purple I use as a shadow color a little bit better. But that's not happening and I'm not able to really build up her lips or her cheeks a whole lot more either. So I guess it truly is time to start on the hair and the eyes. And since I'm kind of limited in my color selection, we're gonna use natural brown as our base, base color. And these really just bleed out all over the place. And I'm letting the brush sort of trying to be delicate and like really flicky with it. I'm trying to let it define my shapes. Ugh. I really am not a fan of these markers. These might be going in the winter burn it box since lightly used is one of the allowable conditions. See syndrome mushy and not great. Torture another alcohol marker artist with these. Oh yeah, it was chameleons have like a fiber, they call it a Japanese nib, and a Japanese brush nib, which is funny because Copic is a Japanese company and it kind of like pioneered the, the foam rubber brush nib and like a lot of like food aid pen manufacturers also use like a foam rubber rather than a like a fiber because the fiber really frays so it's like really ironic that uh they call it a japanese nib when yeah anyway they they say that their fiber nib as it frays over time will feel more like a real brush y'all i watercolor i use markers i use real brushes all the time please just use the foam rubber 
this is difficult to control. I mean, you could send me like a single ended marker, right? Like just send me a good brush. Don't, don't give me like a double ended marker where the brush turns to mush like 13 minutes in or however long it's been in to like an illustration. That's not really, cause I use it to pull, I use my brush to pull like a lot of my details and now it's just like a hot mess of mush that isn't gonna work. So if you, already I can say this, if you use alcohol markers, like if you already have, if you already have like a Copic collection or if you have like some Prismacolors or, you know, even if you just have one, like if you have experience using those other markers, don't even waste your time with these. Cause like compared to that, these are really frustrating and not good. All right, so we're gonna knock that back. I wanna use ivory. I don't really wanna use cream either, but we'll use cream. And now that I've sort of like fixed the contrast, she's looking a little bit better, which is good. But like, I've talked to you guys about this before with like any of the affordable art supply or most of the affordable art supply challenges I've shared with you guys. Um, just because like an experienced artist can make something work doesn't mean you should like, doesn't mean it's going to be an easy product to use. It doesn't mean it's going to be the solution to your problems. So a lot of those artists, especially the ones who like consistently use the same inexpensive art supply, they've like really spent a lot of time mastering that. Which is, that's good. Like, I'm not saying that's not good. That is good. I mean, and I certainly have like my own affordable art supplies that I've kind of spent a lot of time learning how to use. Mm, one better pink than what I've got. I guess I'm going to try using peach. Because I want a more intense pink than dusty rose. And then do another layer with Natty Brown. And then I'm also going to, where is it? I want to use the, this. Push some of that color back, hopefully. And then we'll do another layer up in the hair. I'm going to try and start pulling some more details. All right, and then I'm going to do that over here. As with watercolor, for every layer, I do try to cover less. It helps build up comp uh, contrast, almost like confidence. That's not exactly what it's intended to do. Not exactly intended to build up confidence. All right, guys, so a pretty significant amount of time has passed. I had a tornado warning, I cooked dinner, it's been an eventful evening, but now we can get to work on finishing this gal up. And we're going to use dark brown. And work our way through shading her hair. And before the brush gets too beaten up, I'm going to go ahead, <clears throat> go ahead and do her eyebrows. And I'm just going to work blending back and forth between the two colors. And even though I've had a chance to take a break, the shape of the barrel is still really irritating in my hand and it makes it really difficult to control. Now, maybe if you have larger hands than I do, because I do have fairly small hands, you won't have this problem. But if you have arthritis, 
this might be just intolerable. And it's part of what makes these markers pretty difficult for me to control. There's just nowhere for me to comfortably rest my hand or for this to comfortably rest in my hand. So I'm constantly trying to readjust the position of the marker because this sharp groove here rests right against the bone in my thumb. And I'm gonna zoom in really tight so you guys can see how bent out of shape the brush ends up. It's just sort of like permanently flopped over and I think you guys can probably tell that I'm being very light handed with this. I'm being very delicate in my strokes. All right, let's actually switch over here to the finer bullet nib. And I thought I could use this in to sort of tighten up some details, but it's so uncomfortable in the hand that it's just really hard to control from that end as well. With the G1 Spectrum Noir, or G2 Spectrum Noir markers, they, um, they had sort of a rubberized grip, which kind of helped with this hand fatigue problem, but these don't have anything at all. And they're just very, very uncomfortable to use for longer periods of time. So it makes me wonder who their target or the, uh, demographic is. All right, so next I want to, hmm. Actually, I don't even want to use these anymore because they're really wrecking my hands. So. What I might even just do is switch on over to the black Stabilo 0.88 that was included in the scrawler box where I got the paper and where I got two of these markers from and just continue on with that. But first I do, I'm gonna have to grab another marker and this is 012Y by Blick Studio Brush Markers and I'm gonna use I don't want to use that in, I want to use this in. I'm going to use Wisteria and then blend the heck out of that. And then once that's dried, I will go ahead and use wine on it, but I'm going to go in here on her dress on the white part and use a little bit of Wisteria to indicate a shadow and then go back in with the Prismacolor. Bump that color down a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead, and this is a water-based marker, so it should be non-reactive with what we've already got on the paper. I mean, one of the joys of Working with colored ledges, you're not, you don't actually have to do a line art. So I'm not going to do a full line art. I'm just going to help tighten certain areas. Oh, actually. A little bit of dusty pink in the corners of her eyes. I kind of wish it had been another color because black, I guess I could have grabbed the sepia. Black is a little, little too intense, but that's okay. And let's see, where is my white Signo? So I could actually get brave and try using the post chalk they sent me last time. Except this is water-based, so that's gonna activate the 
Stadler. So I shouldn't actually use that. Alrighty, so I went and grabbed a white Signo. And I'll just use this to add highlights here and there. Alright guys, so my Spectrum Noir Illustrator Marker piece is finished. You guys check out the colors right there. I did use a couple of additional materials in this. So I will put those to the side. But I am basically done. So my thoughts on these markers. I don't like them. Um, I don't like the fiber tip. I don't like how mushy it gets. I don't like um, how far the alcohol ink bleeds out. And that could have been the paper. The mushy tip though is all these markers and it gets broken in really fast and then you can't really pull a fine line with them. So um, the markers themselves have kind of a cool looking body, but the sharper edges, and they're not even that sharp, but it's enough to dig into your hand while you're coloring and really start to hurt your hand. So these are just really not very ergonomic markers. Now there are other markers on the market that have a hexagonal body, but as you can see, they're much smaller and they don't bite into your hand the way these do. They also feature a little bit of um, an indent on the caps to make removing the cap easier, whereas these caps are made with the same material as the body and can be difficult to remove. Um, they've also changed their color scheme and it's supposed to go with what they've got. So they have a name, I guess that's for us artists. And then um, they have a number which is supposed to match up with your existing Spectrum Noir markers. Um, but it's also supposed to teach us color theory. And it's just like, you know, it's not a marker brand job to teach artists color theory. We can learn it elsewhere. I really would not want to be reliant on uh, Spectrum Noir, a brand made by a company called Crafters Companion. I really wouldn't want to touch, ugh, trust them to teach me color theory. There are loads better resources on the internet than, you know, a brand to teach you color theory. So I'm not really impressed by that. Um, I think they were just trying to find a way to um, explain why you would need to buy both or own, um, why you would need to buy the Illustrator markers if you already owned the Spectrum Noir alcohol markers. So I'm not really a big fan of those. Now I get asked pretty often what affordable alcohol markers I would recommend that you guys buy. And if you are not necessarily looking for refillable, then I would recommend you get the Blick Studio brush markers. And those are manufactured for Dick Blick. And that's a big art supply chain store. That's their store brand and uh, that's what this is here. They're actually quite excellent and they're very affordable. And they have a nicer brush nib than the Spectrum uh, Noir Illustrator markers. And uh, they're just a better deal in my opinion. And uh, that's what I would recommend, especially over 
these markers here. And you can find them either in Dick Blick stores or on their website. Um, second, I would recommend Prismacolor markers. These are pretty ubiquitous. You can find these anywhere. You can certainly find these almost anywhere you can find these. I know Joann's will carry uh, Spectrum Nor products and they don't necessarily color carry Prismacolor products, but I really wouldn't recommend getting your alcohol markers at Joann's anyway, unless you've got like a super duper coupon. Now, if you absolutely have to get, for whatever reason, a Spectrum Noir marker, I recommend you get the Spectrum Noir uh, G2 alcohol markers, and they're still big, they're still awkward in the hand, they still hurt my hand to hold them, but you can also get a replaceable brush nib that is very similar to the Prismacolor brush nib, and it is far superior to the brush nib on these markers here. So I hope this review and field tests were helpful, informative, inspiring for you guys. Um, let me know in the comments below if there's something you need me to cover with these markers that you haven't seen covered here. And if you enjoy alcohol markers, make sure you check out my alcohol marker playlist here on this channel for reviews and tutorials. And for even more alcohol marker reviews, head on over to my blog, natasoup.blogspot.com and check out my alcohol marker section. And reviews like this are only made possible thanks to the generosity of my art nerds on Patreon, who will have had access to this video probably about a month before you guys get to see it. So if you're interested in early access content, and you want to the ability to determine what sort of stuff I'm going to work on, then let me, uh, sorry, then join that community. So I hope you guys have a great day and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye guys.